Hey everyone, oh my gosh, we are so excited. So tonight we are at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. We are having dinner at Victoria and Albert's. That's right, we're excited because it's been a long way to return to this restaurant. It did mm -hmm. close during COVID and it actually went through a renovation not too long ago as well. So we're going to experience a brand new restaurant essentially, right? Absolutely, yeah. And especially because they changed their menus around so much, I do experience or expect a completely new experience for us all around. Mm -hmm. So right. we're very excited for this preview. It is the 27th. It does officially open up to the public Tomorrow. on the 28th. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this video and enjoy the bites that we're about to eat. So right off the bat, we are greeted with this little treat, and this is a non-alcoholic sip. I think he said it was jasmine and citrus tonic. Oh wow, there's a lot of flavor there. There is. He did say it was very sweet, and it was like kind of not a palate cleanser, but just something to kind of open you up for your dining experience. And yeah. They're not kidding. I think it's light and airy. It goes along with the whole garden theme that they have outside. It's yes, it right does. Now, so. Right. Our server came by and asked if we wanted to start with a cocktail and showed us the menu. It's on a very large iPad, which is actually really cool. Um, but here is a quick look at everything they have um, cocktail wise. Okay, so we were presented with our menus, and this is the menu. It's in this really fancy envelope. It's almost like you're being invited to Cinderella's Ball. Um, and when you open it up, you can see the entire menu here. Now, this menu, because I know we're going to get this question, it looks like it is $295 per guest. And then there is an optional wine pairing for $150. And as you can see, it's multiple courses. Everything looks wonderful. Um, our server did let us know that there is a special gold menu. Actually, I'll let Steve talk about that. So as Mike mentioned, there's also the option for the gold menu, which is a Queen Victoria's room, which is a private room that houses, I think, four private tables, and it's very exclusive as well. In addition to that, the chef's table shares the same exact menu. What this is gonna provide is an additional two courses, and she also mentioned two additional wine pairing options as well for the courses that we have available to us. So we wanted to look at this because we typically upgrade to the turbo as an additional course when we're here in the main dining room, and she said that's mentioned in this, so. I think we might go with the gold, we'll see. This menu is $375 per guest and the optional wine pairing for this is $200. Cocktails have arrived, and I have decided to go with the Maple Bacon Manhattan. Um, now this is, um, basically he said I could sip it just like this and just add the tawny port as I would like. Um, the recipe does call for the one ounce, which is what is in here, but they present it this way so I can at least get a good taste of that rye. All right, and my cocktail is a hot fashion cocktail. This is made with Yamazaki 12 year single malt whiskey infused with A5 grade Miyazaki Japanese Wagyu. So you can imagine it's gonna have like a big like umami flavor with it, which I'm pretty excited about. And then it's also made with some house made chestnut bitters. It's gonna give it a little bit more of a nutty flavor. And then on top of that, they took this cherry right here and they've been marinating it with Kirsch for, I think they said for uh, a couple weeks as well. So it's going to have a very, um, you know, luscious flavor. Just be aware that it does come with a pit. So they made sure that you're aware that, you, that you're not going to break off a tooth or choke on that. So I do love that these cocktails are pretty much bespoke. What I mean by bespoke is they give you the opportunity to kind of create your own flavor profile. So they give you a little bit of a side seltzer in mine and then Mike gets a little bit of a, I think it's a port reduction, tawny port, and then it also has a little bit of aged maple syrup in there. So based on your own palate, you get to add, try, taste, and make the perfect cocktail for yourself. I think that makes it for an even better experience. For anybody that's going to try this, if you don't like just have a sip and straight whiskey, definitely start with a little bit of seltzer on there. I think it's very balanced. All the flavors work very well together. I'm enjoying this. My cocktail is very, very good as well. Um, I did what Steve did. I took a little sip. It was very, I was going to say butterscotchy, but you said it better. It said it was like nutty. It was very much that. And then when I added the tawny port, it just brought it to a different level. It was very, very good. I like it a lot. We have just been invited to take a tour of the kitchen and they're letting me bring the camera. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. So, go to the kitchen. 
Welcome. Thank you. He's uh, been part of us uh, for the past 15 years, uh, and he was a natural progression of uh, being part of the restaurant. So. Wow. Uh, nice to meet you. Great to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. I know that uh, many years ago he will be my partner eventually, right? He's <laughs> been, uh, such an artist. So. There you go. Love the energy. This is Seth Miguel. Here it is, the chef's table. Oh, wow. You can show after after we make a quitting. Oh, that's great. Chef Thomas was with us for many years before he's. Hello. Alright, so what do you think about Okay, I need to calm down for a second. We were just invited by the Nature de Israel to tour the kitchen, and he allowed us to bring the camera. And last time we were here, that was. As you recall, it was not allowed in the back. So, so I was a little nervous, yes. but it was such a cool experience. It definitely is. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We got to meet the chef, and we just got to see everything. We got to see what they're doing with the chef's table. The energy back there is phenomenal. Yes, it is. I am so excited. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we have a set of small bites that precede the start of your menu. Just an offering from the team. I'm going to do a complete disservice if I ever try to say exactly what we said uh, to describe this. So I'm going to start with the grilled pineapple. And they're all intended to be uh, basically uh, small bites you use your hands for. So mm -hmm. they did say if you fill in a couple using your hands, use utensils. But when in Rome, we're going to, we're going to do exactly what they tell us to do. Right. So here we go. So it's grilled pineapple with um, a lot of stuff on top. They do a good job of like just really enhancing it, but you get it, you get like that amazing pineapple flavor. But because it's grilled, you get like this this um, nice crunch to it. You have a um, a great shoot overall. So it's not just a piece of pineapple, right? And when it comes to some of the rice that they have on top of it, but the flavors are just great. All right, how about you grab the next one? So the next one is going to be compressed watermelon inside like a phyllo dough. Um, right. with some other savory flavors inside. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to reference the menu, <laughs> but I'm expecting this to be delicious. Yeah, that was delicious. I really like, I think they said it was a langoustine, yeah. was what it was. Exactly. That was awesome. I, at first bite, you get that crunch of the phyllo dole, and then you taste that compressed watermelon, and then the finish, in my, from my experience, was the langoustine. It balanced so perfectly, I loved that. All right, good. And we're gonna go ahead and let Steve dive into the final taste. Yeah, so this one is filled uh, in a clear, filled with um, said truffle potato. So that okay. really sounds amazing. And it's top of that barico ham that's been um, shaved correctly is what they said in the back. So um, this is what I'm most excited for because I'm a savory person, I'm excited about this. Anticipated. That's my favorite. That is, is just it? so good. <laughs> so good. The truffle flavor is like it's like an explosion of truffle flavors coming out of that clear. And the saltiness of the Iberico ham really kind of balances out the savoriness that you get with that truffle flavor. So I'm very excited about Mike trying that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that one was not my favorite because I am not a big fan of Iberico ham okay. at all. Keep it in us. But I did like the eclair. I got a little bit of truffle, not a lot, but it was a nice little flavor profile there. Okay. I'm just not a big fan of um, Iberico ham. I like the second one better. I like the phyllo dough compressed watermelon. That one was that one was my favorite. Okay, great. And because we actually ate the food the way we were supposed to with our hands, they brought us with a nice towel to clean our fingers and to make sure again that we are uh, completely ready for the next course. Yes. So they just placed down the mother of pearl spoons. So we know what that means, caviar. Okay, so Amuse Bouche has shown up and it is a royal Belgian caviar and it's served on top of cauliflower panna cotta. And I don't want to toot my own horn here, but I have actually made something very similar to this from a Thomas Keller recipe. It was years ago. 
but I'm very excited to see it on the menu here at Victorian Alberts. And to pair it, we've also gotten a pour of Runyard Champagne. So this looks awesome. Yes. So the cauliflower panna cotta gives it a uh, kind of a nice rich base. So you're gonna get like kind of a buttery flavor from that. The caviar is like not fishy at all whatsoever. And he said it's very oxidated as well. So it kind of you freeze like a, like almost like a sea breeze into your mouth. What do you say? Um, the flavor is very good. Everything pairs perfectly. And I'll have to admit, it does remind me of the dish that Mike <laughs> made. So. Uh, kudos to you. You know what you're doing. Yay. Yay. Okay, so as you can see, I'm about halfway through this caviar. It is delicious. And like like Steve was saying, I've already made a dish that was very similar to this, but they beat me because this tool here, it adds that perfect crunch, that perfect element that was missing from my recipe. It This is so good. So I'm excited for this for Mike because he's a snob with his bread. So. <laughs> Yeah, yes, bread service has started. This is the first of three breads I believe we get. This first one is an epi bread, and we got a very rich French butter topped with Malden sea salt. I'm so excited, I love my bread and butter. So how do you go about this? Okay, so I'm gonna do it in the French style. Okay. So I'm gonna break it apart. What do you mean French style? Because in France, you don't bite your bread, you tear it, okay. you tear a bite-sized piece. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead. This is the butter he talked about. It looks like it's already topped with malt and sea salt. And right. And gave us a side as well to enhance it. Looks like it, yeah. 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 So we go ahead. Oh my gosh, that's so much butter. Oh well. Wow. Here we go. Wow. So fresh. Very warm. You got that nice crunchy exterior, a soft interior, and that butter. I think it's an expression, isn't it? But it just melts in your mouth. <laughs> so here we are. 2018 vintage of a Merkel block, uh, Erzinger Wurzgarten. This is a Spätlese Riesling coming to us from the Mosul of Germany. Perfect. We have paired this wine with your next course, uh, not only to pair it with the acidity, because Riesling is known for having a higher uh, acid content and a higher acid cream. But we've chosen a Spätlese because you're going to get a little bit more uh, sweetness from it. And on that uh, sweetness, it's going to be a little bit more coating on your palate. So we've paired this not only to pair with the acidity of the sauce on the plate for the next course, uh, but also to pair with the texture of the sauce as well. Okay, so you were very distracted. She was talking about the wine, which is a very delicious, beautiful Riesling. Yes. But what was the harpist playing in the, the background? Star Wars score. <laughs> so she's doing like this beautiful like uh, description of this, you know, German wine, and then again, Star Wars score is in the background. <laughs> so I, I was we love distracted it. with multiple interests. So it was great. Okay, so here we are with Danish Hiramaso Crudo, which I'm pretty excited about. It has carrot as a base layer, and then also um, some some potatoes as well in between. They did say that there's a little bit of dollop um, yuzu along the way to help kind of sweeten up, but the scent is very citrusy. The citrus is helping to kind of somewhat give it a cooked flavor to it for those that are not a big fan of raw fish. Um, they gave us both a fork and spoon. He did advise not to go straight into a spoon and grab all that flavor uh, on the base and just try the fish as it is and then adjust your palate accordingly. This is very, very nice. I want to say it's very delicate. It's very light. Definitely get that cucumber taste. It's just very light, very refreshing. It's not what you think when you think of like seafood or fish. This is delicious. So I gave Mike a note before he took the bite, which is think ceviche. And that's the citrus element for it as well. Okay, yeah, ceviche, I, I, I get that. This is so much more lighter and refreshing in ceviche. I find ceviche to be have a little bit more chew to it. A little bit more chew and very citrusy. So we're getting it with the citrus. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, this is wonderful. Yeah. All right, so if you guys watch our videos from Hawaii, you know <laughs> I love this song. He's obsessed with this song. Oh my god. From the Shallows from A Star is Born is being played right now on the harvest. So, a little glint in so my eye. You had your Star eye. Wars, now you have your Lady Gaga, so we're this good. This is my night. <laughs> The Harvest. So Steve got his Star Wars and his Lady Gaga. I'm getting my never-ending story right now. So this is amazing. I love it. I feel like only in like Disney, 
when Disney wants to do like a fine dining signature restaurant, are they going to bring these kind of they songs? They could be whimsical. Yes, yeah. yeah. exactly. I love it. Yes. All right. So every single time we've done Victorian Alberts, there's always one course that we absolutely just think back on as one of the best courses, and it's the Wild Turbo. So. We did order that tonight. I hope it lives up to the hype. I'm pretty confident it will, but we're gonna see. Yes. Right, we have a lime pot turbo from Portugal. It's one of Queen Victoria's favorite proteins. Tonight's rendition of it, which is gonna be more summer driven. Okay. We're gonna finish with that blue tail. Again, enjoy that Pernil aromatic as well as a bit of the protein. First thoughts? Um, presentation is beautiful. Yep. He did say it's a different take on the turbo. So uh oh, okay. It's a lighter, springier, <laughs> springier version of it. So let's take a bite and then we will talk about it. That is so light. I, I, don't they say flaky for fish? Yes. It's it's very flaky. Just so delicate, so soft. I love this. Oh my gosh, wonderful. Did you say fluffy first? I, I almost said fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible at describing food, guys. I'm sorry. Good team. Hey, we'll keep going. Buttery, flaky, not fluffy. <laughs> It is probably my favorite fish of all time. For sure. And the difference I think this time is, I think the base is definitely there with the pernod that they talked about. Uh, this has a little bit more of a fennel flavor, which I kind of like. It yeah. actually enhances it, but it doesn't overpower it at all. I'm telling you folks, like this is still the one for us so far. We haven't gone the rest of the courses, so I can't say it's the one tonight, but if you have an opportunity, you need to try this turbo. So one of the things I love here about Victorian Alberts is that if you come here regularly, like we do, you do kind of become a little bit of the family. And so Sharon just came by, and she was actually one of our servers in the past. She's actually in one of our videos. I will link that down below. Um, but she was telling us about, like, she was asking our input as to what we thought of the dining room and the yeah. decor, and she did mention that soon they will be having new tables and chairs here. So I guess <laughs> what we're seeing isn't the final, final. Yes, it'll be an evolution of the final, yeah. Event, right? So, which is pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Which means we have to come back. We gotta come back. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not sure if the, the mic picked up the description um, for the bread, but this is basically a take on a croissant. So very excited about this. They said it's 27 layers that have been rolled and compressed, which means it's actually going to be 54 uh, layers altogether, which is pretty exciting. We're fans of croissants, and the butter is also been reduced through the milk proteins, have a little extra richness, so should be a pretty rich um, bread course here. So it's leading up to fish, which might also be indicative of the fact that we have red wine in front of us. We're starting to get more into those savory uh, courses, so excited about that. Oh my goodness, this is delicious. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go slow on this one. I wanna savor this. Okay, but real talk, real talk. Okay. This has been replaced with our favorite brioche. That is true, yes. So, We're missing our brioche. Which is better. Oh, I'll let you because <laughs> no. It's it's very delicious. I really like it. Like you just saw my facial expression. Yes. It's very delicious. But thinking about that brioche that we used to have. Yeah. Oh, that was so good. Alright. Now I'm missing it. <laughs> It's delicious. Probably the best croissant I've ever had in my life. I like missing the, that brioche, I like right? The brioche. <laughs> the brioche is it, has, it holds a special place in our hearts. So right. Don't know why, but we love that brioche. So again, very good. Not bad. It's delicious. Just not brioche. All right. For our next course, this is actually uh, Glacier Fifty One Toothfish, which. I know I've seen some documentaries on them, but it's a very deep uh, ocean fish that they have to catch. There's actually, uh, you have to go down 2,000 meters, is what our waiter said to be able to collect it, which means it's going to be a little bit more of a 
kind of like um, uh, like a snapper kind of flavor. You're going to have a little bit more crustaceous flavors on top of that. I don't necessarily get that so much. It's white, it's flaky, and then they paired it with some really great like Asian flavors on top of this. You get some nice little pepper flavor on there, a little bit more like a, like a soy reduction. I'm probably butchering what they actually made it with, but I'm just telling you my tasting notes on this. A ton of mushrooms, which... They, the, the mushrooms sucked up all that flavor. Very delicious, very good. Complete difference from turbo. Turbo was very light, buttery. This is a little bit more savory fish, and I think it pairs perfectly with our wine as well. So now we have the green circle chicken, and this is served with Australian black truffle and corn. It smells amazing. I can definitely, I, there's just sitting here, I can smell all that black truffle. I'm very excited about this one. Let's dig in. So the raviolo is amazing. Oh, that nice, like, bright chicken flavor on top of that, um, with that demi on top. <laughs> All these flavors are amazing. There's just something about, like, chicken and truffle and that Madeira sauce that they poured over. It's just, it's very comfort food. It's very, very refined, high dining, like, signature style comfort food. It's amazing. So for our next course, we have some lamb and it's served with blueberry and violet mustard. We're definitely getting into those really hearty dishes as Steve mentioned earlier. Um, but and it also seems like the way they described it, it's kind of like lamb three ways. Exactly. So we're getting to try like various cuts, yeah, if that's right. Various cuts and different ways of preparation as well. Right, yeah. So very excited about this one. We always say that, we're, we're always very excited, but let's dig in. <laughs> so I've had lamb before. I've had good lamb, I've had bad lamb. This is probably the best lamb I've ever had. <clears throat> and a lot of this is just because of the tenderness for it. So sometimes lamb can come across as a little bit like tough and a tougher chew, and sometimes it has a gamey flavor to it. This, not at all whatsoever. It's so tender, tender like um, a USDA prime filet mignon. So it's that much tenderness to it. And the flavors you have on top of it with that roux underneath, so good. I'm excited about trying all the other different elements of that, but the main piece of this dish is just out of this world, best lamb I've ever had. So here we are with our main entree for the gold menu, the Miyazaki A5, and it's served with a potato roasty. Now our previous course, which was the lamb, that is the main entree for the main dining room menu. But for this menu, this is what you're gonna be looking at. So as you expect with A5 Miyazaki beef, it is very tender. It is like fork tender. You can definitely cut through it. And the, um, the texture in your mouth, just prepare for this if you've never had it before. I don't want to call it like meat jelly, but it, is, it just melts in your mouth. Like mm -hmm. it's just like melts like butter. <laughs> you just gotta say it because that's the way it actually, uh, actually tastes the feel, the texture. Um, paired with that potato, the potato actually has kind of like a, almost like a home style flavor to it, which I right. kind of like. It takes like this elegant piece of beef with like a home style type of potato, and it kind of grounds it a bit. I think, and the sauce definitely elevates everything. Altogether, another uh, amazing course uh, for the enhancement menu, uh, the gold menu that Mike talked about. So now we are into our cheese course, and already we can see this is very different from what we used to see yes. back in the day. But I like this. It's a very beautiful presentation. Um, it looks like we are being transported back to Norway, according to our server, and we're being served plum three ways. So this is very interesting. Like I said, it looks amazing. I'm very interested to see what we have here. All right. And then, of course, with our wine pairing, it is served with a dessert wine. I don't remember exactly what he said it was, it was but... Like Hell, yeah, that's what it is. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that. It, it's very much like brie. Very, very good. It's going to be interesting with the plums. We'll say that that's the problem. So, I have to say, plum is not like my favorite fruit. It's a fruit, right? It's like a yes, stone fruit yes, or something. Yes, yes. It's not my favorite, but I like it here. Granted, I only had the one. I had the compressed, but with this cheese, it's really, really delicious. I really, really like this cheese. She was right. It's brie. It's brie. It's not Clarence Brie. It's not Clarence <laughs> Brie. Of course not here. <laughs> so, spoiler, I've already dug into all three, and I just want to say the compressed plum was very good. That second one, that was my least favorite. There was something about it that was very bitter to me. That's the compressed I, one. Oh, really? I thought the cube one was the compressed one. No, the first one is pure plum, just chopped plum. Okay, well, there it is. <laughs> 
but I thought that sorbet was the best. All I right. really, really liked it. It's very sweet. It's really what you want with that kind of after dinner like finish. Okay. So, yeah. This is why it's important to pay attention. We're Stop. <laughs> So once again, the first one is plum in the raw. Okay. The second one's compressed. The third one's the sorbet. Then we have honeycomb, and then we have the cheese. Got it. Okay. Cool. All right. So for our next dessert, we have some honey elderflower ice cream, and it looks like they've topped it with some. I think he said it was like a ginger crumble. Yes. So ginger streusel. Ginger streusel. Yes, that's what it was. And this is gonna move us from savory to sweet to really get into those good desserts that we're really looking forward to. Yes. Dessert vibe coming our way. Yes. Yes. Where? Hurt? Yes, great. Um, um, okay, it threw me off because, you know, sometimes in these fancy restaurants, it's like, oh, this is ice cream. I saw this red glaze. I just assumed that there's real ice cream underneath that red glaze. I was not expecting that. <laughs> um, but um, that red glaze is very tart, so. Good to know. Be careful. Moving into the sweetness. <laughs> yeah, More right. tartness. I guess, yeah, because it's tart on top, then there's ice cream underneath. So it's probably so. a bit of a palate cleanser too. Right, for sure. Yeah. So as you can see, we now have some coffee service going and they're using a vacuum coffee maker. A little different from what we've seen in the past, but nonetheless, still impressive and pretty cool. So as described, um, this, of course has no name so they gave us a napkin that we won't be able to hold in our hand because of just simply the cleanliness of it, it has some powdered sugar on it so they just offer this up as a way for us to keep clean um, they did say it re resembles mostly the flavors of a souffle so pretty excited about that and um, they did warn us that the middle is a little bit warm so just be careful worrying about the temperature mostly and it looks like our coffee might actually be ready <laughs> Holy moly, look at this dessert. This is really impressive. And she mentioned when she plated, um, she put a knife down. She said, it's very unusual that we're going to give you a knife for dessert, but we believe that beauty, what was it? Like beauty is in the center of some, beauty is in the heart of, oh, Steve, okay. Beauty lies beneath the surface. <laughs> There it is. So apparently we're gonna have to cut into our dessert. So let's see what we've got. Okay, so you can see that there was an ombre on the outside, but when you cut into the middle, there is an ombre in the center as well, the filling. And then as you mentioned, there's a, like a champagne, um, touch of champagne is what you said, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that allows for like the acidity to kind of cut through some of the richness here, so. Rich, mousse flavors. Uh, Mike, you're gonna love this, you're a chocolate lover. So this is, gonna be, this is gonna be a wrap your life. So according to the menu, we still have two more. I know, two courses. more desserts left. I think they come together though, because I saw another table. I know what they say desserts like, just little so bites. Full. So full, so full. <laughs> By the way, in case you were wondering, the coffee is very delicious. It's very, very hot, but it's very good. So if you allow us to end your evening the same way we began, with small bites from our pastry team. Our chef de cuisine was born on St. Patrick's Day, and so this is a little nod to him. His mother used to make him a little jello cake, and so our team has put together a olive oil chiffon cake pistachio uh, buttercream on the top is going to be a pistachio marzipan and then a Sicilian pistachio on top. We move into a pavlova, classic Australian dessert with strawberry meringue. It is filled with lemon curd and fresh blackberry and blueberry on top. Unveiling a classic bonbon. Hazelnuts that our team toasts and grinds in house. It's enrobed in white chocolate and 23 karat edible gold. And lastly, in the candy dish this evening, we have our tropical caramels. Wrappers are edible. You'll find flavors of banana, mango, and passion fruit inside. So bon appetit. Right. Yeah.
And so I think with that, we are finished. We are. This was very, very good, very delicious. Exactly what we are hoping for with the Victorian Alberts. At least I think so. Absolutely. What do you think? Most yeah. definitely. It's, it's, so we know to expect that this should be our major meal for the day. Oh, yeah. Plan for it all day long. Yeah. Also plan to never do anything after your reservation. This is your night. We have said that before. Yes. This is your night. Don't. Don't think you're gonna go back to the parks after this or go do something after this. It's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> right. So. so our reservation was at seven o'clock. Yes. It is eleven thirty-seven right now. So, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're so happy about that too. I mean, honestly, yeah, it's been very great relaxing. Experience. We've been very well taken care of tonight. This is this is amazing. This is an experience. Exactly, for it's sure. experiential dining. So yeah, that's what we recommend. We definitely think you should do it if this is up your alley. This is a lot yeah. of food, so you got to plan for it. Right, and it's not for everybody, right? Like right. we we like to be adventurous and try a little bit of everything. And remember, our the menu we had was two extra courses. So no, just think, understand that. Understand that. Yeah. And thus, our dinner at Victorian Alberts comes to an end. It does. We're happy. Yeah, we're happy. Yeah, <laughs> happy and full. Yes, yeah, so we can't say we're excited because we were already excited throughout the whole <laughs> dinner experience, but uh, right. it's great to be back. It really is. It really is, yes. Also, it was so great to see all the staff that we've uh, dined with in the past. Again, yeah. you know, commit to, commit to your wait staff because uh, we know so many people there yeah. now. Right? Everyone there is so wonderful, so friendly. They're so, I want to say familiar. Is that like the right thing they to are, say? They yes, are, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They remember us. And yeah, they welcome us by our first and last name. They know that from our reservation, but like, it's so right. great to see you. Last time we saw you was XYZ, so like, okay. For sure. The food was absolutely spectacular. I mean, like we said this before, this is your night. If you're going to make a reservation here, make this your night relax and enjoy it absolutely just enjoy it. well i think everything we've shown has spoken for itself so we hope you like this video if you did give us a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and from our magic family to yours enjoy, enjoy.